to Thursday night Bible study with Apostle T. B. Walker. Good afternoon, everyone. Or should I say good evening, everyone? This is Apostle T. B. Walker. I want to take this time to welcome you to our Thursday evening Bible study. Glad to have you here. Uh, we've been we was you know we've been looking at Micah. Uh, we know before that we were looking at Ezra. We're now going to take a look at Amos. I'm not saying that we're going to stay in Amos, but tonight we're going to be in Amos. We're just going to read one verse. It's uh, the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse number 3. Amos 3, 3. I'm sure a lot of you all have probably heard this verse before. You know, those that are in church, uh, those that have studied the word, I'm sure that this is something you may have even studied before. So I want to talk a little bit about that and to be able to see how that connects to our lives right now. You know, part of what you want to do in Bible study is not just make sure we get, you know, the line and the jot and the tittle down that we, you know, make sure that we exegese every text. But we also want to make sure that there is good life application, you know, in the word, that we make sure that there's an understanding of the uh, the word of God so that people will be able to now apply what they're hearing to their lives. So let's take a look at the word. Once again, that's the book of Amos chapter number three. Starting at verse number three and ending in verse number three. Chapter number three, ending in verse number three. It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you once again for allowing us to be here. We thank you for this moment, this time that we have together. This is the last Bible study that we'll have this year. But God, we know that today is a day that you've made and we're rejoicing even now and being glad in it. Not looking forward, but looking into the right now that we're we're mindful of this present moment that we're in. And God, we just thank you right now that you're speaking to us. You're supping with us. You're fellowshipping with us right now. So God, we just blessing you right now for being with us right now. You promised to never leave us or forsake us. So we just thank you right now for your message, for your word, for your instruction, for your, your deliverance in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's take a look at the scripture. It says, uh, can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, you know, we've heard this. I'm, I'm sure many people have heard this. And, you know, we, we've heard this and we connect it oftentimes to things that are personal with us. And whether there be personal relationships, whether there is a business relationship, maybe there's a spousal relationship. You know, you know, should we get, should I get married to this person? Can these two people get married? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Listen, maybe, you know, maybe here's a person who's Jewish. Here's a person who is a Christian. Can they, can they get married? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Listen, we're going to go into this business together. Uh, you know, I'm thinking this way, uh, he's thinking that way. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So we're used to hearing the scripture really connected to a, a question mark, if you will, in terms of whether two people can actually mesh together with different ideas. You know, don't they have to be in agreement with each other in certain foundational things or fundamental things in order to be able to operate? Now, the truth of the matter is you can extract some principles there that can definitely be used in that way. But that would be a gross misinterpretation of what the prophet is actually saying. And that would be a misinterpretation of this prophecy. What you have in this prophecy is a connection. It's a, all about the relationship between man and God. You know, when you begin to look at this, and, and specifically here, God and Israel. Now, this is really important that you get this because, you know, this judgment that the Amos is actually talking about that is coming. Don't forget that the overriding, the looming uh, message is judgment. Then, you know, we hear get right. We hear opportunities are there. The, the, the Lord is, is long suffering, but he's not going to suffer forever. You have gone astray. You're walking in the ways of your fathers. So all those things that you have been delivered from, you're going back to. You have erected now new temples of idolatry for yourselves. All of those things are there, and there's this looming warning of uh, of doom that is coming. But there's also a, 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 a description of people who really are in some ways blinded to their own situation. You know, much of what you'll find, you know, when you look at Malachi, you know, um, you know, will a man rob God? And the people say, well, how have we robbed you? You know, we, we're just completely oblivious to our condition. And the minor prophets are really coming to a people who have gotten content with where they are. That You know, they have decided that where they are is a good stopping place. This is a good place to rest. We think that we've come a long way. And this is really a great place to be. So, as you know, they're now in a situation where the Lord is now shaking the people and shaking the people. And now he's saying, because of your opportunity, 
abstinence, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be doom that's going to come. There are going to be people that are going to come and going to remove you from the land. You are in jeopardy of missing out on your inheritance, of losing it, your inheritance. Not your whole bloodline, but you, this generation, is in jeopardy of losing what God really wanted and intended for them to happen. So when we look at this relationship, we have to deal with this concept of walking with God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The two is God and Israel. The two is God and man. So for our purposes, because we're not Israel, it's God and man. And so we begin to look at this concept of walking. It's really, really a great expression of fellowship with God. Now, let's take a look at this. You know, the prophet comes and he begins to an, um, announce this judgment, that, and, and God has commissioned him to announce the judgment. It's not something that he's done. It's not because he's looked out and he's frustrated with what's going on. Man, the prophet must be mad about what he's saying. No, God has actually sent him with this message. Now, before they get wide-eyed, as people will, you know, whenever there's doom and gloom that comes, whenever there's prophecy that things are not going to be, you know, bigger houses and bigger lands and bigger barns that are going to be built, people start getting wide-eyed. They start looking and saying, well, you know, what did I do wrong? You know, why, why me? And one of the things that the Lord comes and he says, which is so important here in this book of Amos, he begins to let us know nothing happens by accident. That even when we look and say, this just slipped up on me. You know, I mean, stuff happened so fast, I just didn't even know what was going on. Nothing happens by accident. When you begin to look at what he's speaking here in Amos, that is so important for us, it is that people are blind to the signs that God has given. I mean, they're huge, huge signs. There are things that are in the natural that God begins to use. So the signs are there. But the people are blind to the signs that God has given. The signs of the doom is, is that is there. The signs that it's time to turn around. The time, the sign that, you know, that, that the Lord's hand is near is all around. The things that he has spoken are coming to pass. The things that he said, when you see these things. The end is near. Those things are coming to pass, but the people are blinded. You know, just like in Jesus' day, he looked over at Jerusalem and he said, you know what, I, I mean, I'm looking at the people and they're like sheep without a shepherd. But they're going about their business, marrying and giving to marriage, like everything is all right, and they can't even see the time. The Messiah has come, and they they missed it. They, they could not recognize the, the, what pertained to their peace. And now opportunities have come in the form of these prophets, where God is saying, I keep sending them to you, but you just refuse to heed them. Your, your schedule it is too busy for you to listen right now. You know, your money issues are too important for you to listen right now. The business concerns are just too, too important right now to put aside to hear about those things that may or may not come, even though the signs are already there. Now, you know, when you begin to look at Amos, and one of the things you'll begin to see is that the Lord talks about, and it, it, it's poetry, and it sounds like it's just really, really great literature, but it's, it's not. It has got, you know, when you look at a lion, he says a lion doesn't roar unless he's made a kill, right? A, a, a bird does not attack its prey if there's no prey there, right? A hunter's not going to sit back and look at a trap and, and celebrate over an empty trap, right? And, 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 a, and a trap set does not go off at all, won't move one iota unless there is an animal in there to set off the trap. And guess what? Two people don't walk together unless they have made an agreement, unless they've set a date, unless there's an appointment. So when you begin to look at this, this is designed by God to show one thing. Without friendship, there is no fellowship. Isn't it amazing how we really want the fellowship with God, but we don't want a friendship with God? And that's what the Lord was really telling the people that I see. I know what you want because with me, you know, the Lord says, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm coming and my gifts are with me. So guess what? He's like Santa Claus. I want your gifts. I want to be powerful. I want to be number one. You know, I like the idea of being a king's kid. I want all the privileges that come with your name. I want all of those things, but I don't want to know you. I like saying that I'm a Christian. You know, I like what comes with being a Christian. You know, especially in America, it's still where right where we are. Still kind of puts you in a mainstream. If there's any religion we'll receive at all, it's going to be the one with the guy on the cross, right? 
So, you know, whether you attend church, whether you know anything about church, whether you know anything about Christ, the idea that we like to wear that moniker, because what's it, you know, I mean, what's the alternative? I don't want to be one of those guys. I'm not, I'm not one of them. So, you know, at least I'm a Christian. So we like this idea of Christianity, but we don't like the idea of, of, of being in, in a friendship with God, knowing him, not, you know, the reality is that he knows everything about us. He's numbered hair, every hair on our head, yet we are so lazy. We, you know, I pray all the time. How many times you you hear that? People don't know any Bible verses. They don't know anything about, I don't get into that Bible, but I'm talking to God all the time. I, you know, in my comfort zone, I, I'll say whatever I want to say, but I can't interpret anything that he's saying because what he's going to say is going to be confirmed for me in, in, in the word. So the reality is the Lord is saying, well, listen, you think you have communion with me without having an agreement with me. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Listen, you understand that there are people who desire a communion with God, but I don't have to agree with all your stances. I don't have to, you know, you, let's agree to disagree on a couple things. I don't have to agree about your lordship. I don't have to agree that you're going to be the center of my life. I don't have to agree with the direction that you want me to go in. I don't have to agree with the views that you have that you want me to have. You said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. But I don't have to have your whole mind, right? I'm still a work in progress. So the reality is that we don't, we don't agree on everything. But you know what? We're, we're coming. There's a meeting of the minds between me and God. You know, because there are people who tell you about, you know, this relationship that they have with the Lord. And so when you begin to look at this, God is actually showing this is why we we mess up with man and man. Because we think that we can have fellowship, we, we can have friendship and not have fellowship. And that we want fellowship without friendship. And the Lord is saying, listen, those two, when it, become, when it comes to heaven, those two things go together. And one of the things that you will see is that there is an expectation on the part of Israel, that God would just keep doing his part. There's an expectation on the people who call themselves by his name to do his part. I'm expecting favor from you because that's who you are. I'm expecting a blessing from you because that's what you said you were going to do. Here's the promise. I'm hold you to it. You said you'll never leave me or forsake me. You told me if I call in your name, you'd be right there. That's the promise. We actually, and, and the Lord is coming down and saying, wait a minute. So you guys don't want to talk to me at all. You, I mean, your prayer is not really a prayer. It's just a Christmas list. So you don't really want to fellowship. You don't ask me anything about me. You don't study to show yourself approved by me. You, you don't need my approval. Your life is already laid out the way you want it to be laid out. And you're going to go in your direction, whether no matter what I say or not. And you can possibly follow my lead because you don't know how I roll. You can't possibly go where I want you to go because you're not studying to see where I want you to go. So how can you obey a will that you have no idea what that will is? It is impossible. Yet you dare call me by my, call me by my name. You call me father and then expect favor that you, you expect not to do any of those things you don't want to walk with me, and yet you expect friendship. You still expect favor. You want to continue in your blessing. Listen, we're in a nation right now that is in that same exact spot that, that literally what the, in God we trust. We want to put you on our money. We we want, want to pledge of allegiance and throw your name in there somewhere. You know, we want when, when there's a war, when there's when there's there, there's some calamity, you know, it's God and country, right? But but other than that. Other than God and country, we want to marry who we want to marry. We want to live who, how we want to live. We want to have what kind of surgery to make ourselves whatever we want to make ourselves. We want to say whatever we want to say. We want to blaspheme whenever we get ready. We want to laugh at you and make you a caricature and a joke. But when there's a problem, you better not, the man, I tell you right now, a foreign armed army better not come on these shores. There, there, there better not be a building that blows up, you know, with, with, in the name of someone else. At that moment, we are all great Christians. At that moment, we bow to the flag. And this one is where God is saying, wait a minute, even my church in this nation, even my people in this nation walk contrary to my way and yet want me to bless them. My people who are totally disagreeable to me and disagreement and in disagreement with me are in open rebellion against me, openly fighting against the way that I've described for you to live. 
Do not want holiness at all. We'll distort it at any moment that you can. We'll parse it out and lay it out and say, well, he maybe he means this, but not that. This is, we've always known this, that God's stance was this. But maybe, let, let's, well, here's the thing. I don't agree with that. I'm not going to agree with that. I just don't think that's right. But I still believe, you know, me and God are like this. And the Lord said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, your, your conduct, your, your life is following this mentality. Your behavior is following this mentality. And can two walk together except it be agreed? Listen, want you understand something? Man was in a friendly relationship with God. And listen, I want you to understand something. Sin has set man at variance with God. Sin has made man at enmity with God. And guess what? There is need for reconciliation now. The relationship is broken. It just cannot be put together unless there is a necessary uh, intercessor that can come in. And that, that's Jesus. And you know what? When you begin to look at this, the scripture here gives us this rhetorical question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Listen, when you look at the scripture here, this is where the doom comes in. This rhetorical question, Jesus is saying, oh no, guess what? I'm not actually asking you. A rhetorical question is not like a question where you have to actually ask it. It has an already implied meaning. That It's already implied. Amos, your job is to let them know I'm finished. Your job is to let them know I've already made some decisions. Your job is to let them know we cannot walk together. That the reality is that you can keep on walking if you want to, but there are those that God has said, we can't walk together. We can't walk together because there is no agreement. Listen, I want you to understand something. One of the things that you're, you're really looking at here is that God is using Amos to tell the people that they're not in step with the trajectory that he has for them, that they're not in line with the direction that God has for their lives. Listen, as we look into a new year, this is going to be so important that this is a word of realignment for us, that we've got to really look at ourselves and say, I'm not moving fast enough. You know, listen, there are people who are content. You know what? I mean, the people here in, in, in Israel were, would be baffled by this word. They'd be blown away by this word. You know, just like so many people right now would be blown away by this pronouncement. What are you talking about? Listen, I'm good where I am. I'm cool. I'm over all that. You know what? And God said, listen, we're not talking about what you over. I, this is for movement. I want you to continue to move. There are people that are in the same exact spot and they think it's cool. They don't realize that it's sin, that it's absolutely sin to be in another direction than the direction that God sent you in. If you're not in the direction that God sent you in, you are like Jonah. You are going in the opposite direction. And the Lord was ready for the church to move forward. The Lord was ready for his people to move forward. And guess what? The people have decided to do one thing. They sat down. The people didn't go backwards. The, the people didn't go forward. The people just sat down. They made a decision that they were going to just stay where they were. They were made a, a decision. They were content where they were. They're not going to grow anymore. They, they weren't going to press forward you know, toward the mark of the high calling. They weren't going to look for more things to do to please the Lord. They weren't trying to grow. They, they couldn't. And you know what? what the, the problem here in not growing. And I want you to get that. I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about spiritually, not excelling spiritually, being the same baby that you were last year and the year before that and the year before that, being the same rebel that we were the year before th this year and the year before that and the year before that, being the same obstinate, I've got an excuse for everything person the last year and this year and in the foreseeable future that, that I'm still thinking the same way. And God is saying, listen, I'm telling you right now that you are working against me. You, Lord, what, what are you talking about? Remember when Jesus knocked Paul off his beast and, and he says, Paul, why, why are you bucking against me? Well, why are you working against me? He said, why are you persecuting me? And Paul was like, I'm not persecuting you. But Paul had no idea that he was absolutely operating as an adversary to the kingdom, to the cause. Listen, the Bible says, if you're not for me, you're against me. I'm over here. I'm moving forward. I'm about growth. I'm about upward mobility. I'm about change. We move from faith to faith and glory to glory. I, this whole idea of simply being a, a, a pew sitter, that the whole idea of being a Christian in name, listen, 
That's a dangerous game. And that's the thing that, that, that the enemy doesn't want you to really understand how dangerous that is. When the Lord says, listen, I need you to understand something. If you're not playing on the team, you're not for me. Because if you're not that if you're not for me, if you're not Lord, we saw this guy out here and he was casting out demons in your name, and we forbid him. That's what the disciples said. They didn't say, God, we, we found this guy and he was wearing a shirt that says, you know, it's a Jesus thing. You won't understand. No, no. They didn't say we found this guy and he had the nicest Jesus piece around his neck. No. They didn't say, listen, we met this guy and he's got 25 years of membership in his church and he's going to be a junior deacon at some point. No, there was none of those things that were said. They said, God, we saw a guy back here working. He was out here casting out demons. He didn't need to be a part of any kind of evangelism team. He he saw he he wasn't with us. He he wasn't a part of any group. He was doing this because that was his lifestyle. That's what he did. His his area of gratitude was service. That's how he saw you without us, without the organization. He didn't wait for the Saturday when, well, listen, I mean, if they're not going out this Saturday, I got better. I hope they better go out there because I'm starting to get rusty. No, he he wasn't waiting on them. And guess what? The disciples looked at him and said, Lord, he wasn't with us, so we, we tried to shut him down. Do you understand that that's who God is looking for? God is saying, listen, let me tell you something. Complacent people will try to shut down people who are working. That's what happens. The, the great sin here is that when you have arrived, when you think you have arrived, you will become an adversary to people who are still trying to move because they know they have it. They realize there's more devils to cast out. The disciples were sitting there wondering, Lord, you know what? It's cool because, listen, we already got our church established. So, you know what we want to talk about? Who's going to sit on your left hand or your right hand? Lord, you know what? I mean, we already got the deacon board established. We already got the elders established. I mean, listen, what are we going to do? We already got the, you know, women's day and men's day. We've got our evangelism days and we got our youth days. And we, we got all our days established. What else we got to do? So, we, listen, well, here's what we want to know. When you come into your kingdom, can, can you make sure that this one, that here's my position and that's my position. I'm jockeying for position. Just sitting in the church and just stagnant, learning nothing, growing in no way, shape, or form, living in and knowing the exact same thing. Listen, to walk into a new year knowing nothing new is a shame. It is a crime. This is what the Lord is saying. Listen, this contentment is not just contentment. This contentment is contemptuous. This is contempt in the very face of God. You know what? I mean, listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. A horse that's meant to race, that refuses to leave the gate, is an a disobedient, rebellious horse. And that's what God is looking at right now. I made you a thoroughbred, and you sitting up there like a quarter horse. I mean, I made you a thoroughbred. You walking around like a broke down nag. I've given you the juice to, to, to win this race by more than a nose, and here you are trotting. Like this is not a real thing. Like your anointing isn't real. Sitting there wasting it. Just sitting on it. Just glad to be in the service. Just glad to be a part of that. Don't tell nobody about Jesus. Just tell them about your church, right? Don't tell nobody about Jesus. Tell them about your pastor, right? Don't lead anybody to Christ. Listen, there are people right now who've been in this thing with, with, with double-digit decades. And if you say, ask them, have you ever led anybody to Christ? No, but I sold a lot of tickets to the cotillion. See, when you understand where God is shaking up this place, he's shaking them up. Because the reality is they are no longer seeking him. And God is looking for hungry people that are continuously seeking after him. Let me tell you something. People who are not content. I want you to get that. God is looking. This is th th There's a remnant here. This destruction is going to remove some people who are content. This message was about people who are cool. People who are not looking for more. But when you understand holiness and, the, and going after holiness and the, the idea that in Matthew 5 48, here's what the Lord said. You, therefore, must be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Listen, have you arrived there yet? Have you gotten there yet? Because the only contentment that can come is when we've reached that goal. We're not there yet. When you look at the streets and the condition of the streets, they're ready for an evangelist like you. They're ready for a missionary like you. They're ready for soldiers in God's army. But you know what? It's not just about evangelism. It's not about a work. It's about inside. Listen. This, this, this didn't come because the people, you know, got complacent and they wouldn't work. Because guess what? You can get people to start working. 
Oh, you know what? I got that message now. Let me start that ministry. Oh, you know what? I got that message. I'm going to call brother, brother, such and such. And I'm, I'm going to get on that evangelism team. I'm going to go ahead and get on that soup line. I'm going to feed those people. Is that prayer line thing still open? So listen, we can get to work. But I want you to understand something. This was not about work. This is not about getting to work. Churches are working. Churches are working internationally. We're sending out, you know, train loads of, of, of food and, and, and plane loads of food overseas. And, you know, warlords are eating stuff that we're sending right now over in, in, in different parts of Africa and Asia and in, in, in the Middle East. Right. Every, everywhere. That's that's not the issue. The issue is like, are you seeking after me? That, that That's just UNICEF. That, that's, that's the World you know, Health Fund. You know, listen, I want you to understand something. It's good to feed the children, but that's not what the Lord is talking about. What about are you seeking after righteousness? Are you hungry? Listen, you know what the Bible says? Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Isn't it amazing that the Lord would say, after all this, I'm still searching for people who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. After being in the presence, after being in the service, after hearing what you're hearing, and oddly enough, you still don't want more righteousness, that like, you're not convicted. Like you're Hearing the word of God doesn't convict you to say, I got to start, I got to get in my word. I got to know him because, listen, I want to do exploits. And the Bible says that those that know their God, they shall do exploits. God says, you expect me to do exploits through you like this? I mean, are you serious? You really want me to bless your whole house and I haven't talked to you all year. I mean, are you serious? You have asked me nothing but for money, but for deliverance for him, to, to bless her, to get that job for them. You have asked me nothing about me and you expect my favor. You expect not to be in agreement. I told you to study to show yourself approved unto me, and that you are a workman, that you need not be ashamed. You're able to rightly divide the word of truth. Did you do that? No, 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 no. You just, whenever I got problems, I call on him, no. You know, he he knows, you know, he because he, he'll hear from me. Listen, when, 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 when I'm down, I call on Jesus. And he's not a Kleenex. The Lord said, listen, I'm talking about communion. I'm talking about a concord between you and I. Come now, let us reason together. And you're leaving Jesus at the table. Listen, can you imagine that there's a date and the Lord says, well, we can't walk together because we, we never said we never set a date. There's never an agreement. Well, you never decide to come to me. We, 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 so we, there's impossible for us to walk together because you don't know the, the direction I'm going. Matter of fact, the direction you're going in, you're set in it. Listen, this is a wake up call because listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. There were some people in Israel that God was allowing to be set. <laughs> what a danger. Man, I mean, can you imagine that's your spot? That's your, I'm, I've been pushing you and cajoling you and moving you, and I've been sending prophet after prophet after prophet to keep you moving. And then there's a moment where you decide I'm just going to sit there long enough. And God says, well, you'll sit, you'll sit there. You'll be set in that. That's all you'll know. That's the only information. And so when you need it, you won't even, it won't even come into your heart. It won't even come to your mind to call them. The things that your deliverance will be right there, but it won't even enter into your heart to, to even ask for it. You, you, you'll start to forget it. Because it's not a part of you. You know, you can't just forget how to walk unless there's something who happens in your brain. Because walking is a part of you. But you know what? Your legs can atrophy if you don't walk. Right? You, I mean, you don't forget how to use your arms. But guess what? Stop using them and see what happens. You don't forget. They just no longer work. I remember how to pray, but my prayers no longer work. I, I remember what praise sounds like, but my praise no longer works. He no longer inhabits my, the praises. They, they are real. These people, they worship me with their lips. They, they now give me lip service. Where is it? I've forgotten that he's looking for the heart. I've forgotten that he's looking for worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth. So when you look at this, this was not that there was no trumpet being sounded for God. This was not that there was no choir that was singing. It was just they weren't singing his tune. They just were not playing the tune that God said, now that is what I like. That right there moves me. And God was saying, so you're going to play another song? I mean, can you imagine, you know, every birthday and you saying, listen, I want a blue tie. And every birthday, you get a trip to the Bahamas. You you know what? You get some, some fresh cologne, but you never get the thing that you want. You get what other people think you want. You get what other people think you should have. And you never get what you... You know why? Because they get what they think you want, and they never listen to you. God is saying, listen, I don't want the things that you're offering me. 
I want what I told you right here. I wrote the list down and said, these are the things that I'm looking for. This is the kind of heart that I'm looking for. This is who's blessed. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness because those are the ones that I will fill. Not the unrighteous. Lord, I'm unrighteous. God says, listen, I didn't say I'm going to fill those. I want folks that know that I'm righteous to say I need some righteousness. And listen, I want people that just got a huge dose of righteousness who now say, I want more of righteousness. I mean, man, I'm hungering and thirsting after it. Every day, my whole goal is to seek a closer walk with you. The Lord says, can two walk together? Can you and I walk together? Not you and your spouse, not not you and your business partner, you know, not not you and that, that school that you're, you're planning on going to, like, hmm, do we have the same mentality? No, God is saying, do you have the same mind? Listen, this is not about whether God's going to condescend to you. He said, listen, here's how we walk. Let this mind be in you. Jesus knows where I want to go because we are one. Adopt that mind. Lose your mind. Listen, I want you, I hope you get that. I hope that you grab that right there. Get this mind and lose your mind. Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which means you got to lose yours. That's what Israel here would not do. They refuse to lose their mind. They refuse to lose their mind. What does a man give? What would a man give in exchange for a soul? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? They did not want to lose their minds for Christ. I want you to understand something. There's a way of operating. There's a way of thinking that's in our environment right now. There's a mentality, a modus operandi in our world right now where the Lord said, that's not going to please me. That way of thinking is not going to please me. I know it's cool. You know, it makes you really sound liberal. But I can tell you right now, it's, it doesn't please me. It just opens you up to more compromise and more compromise and more compromise to the to eventually that thing that you call the church really becomes just a social club. It's just a an offshoot of the government. It's just an organism that's created by you that is an imitation of the thing that was created by me. But I can promise you this, mine is protected. And one of the ways that God will protect it is that we will let some things wither and die. Don't let that be you. Don't don't sit there on your gifts this year. Don't, don't sit there and just allow yourself to wither and die. Don't sit there and think, I'm on the team. I don't have to practice. I made the team already. I'm on the team. I don't have to shoot any threes. I'm on the team. I don't have to learn any plays. I'm never going to play anyway. I'm just happy to be on the team. Listen, it's cutting time. I want you to understand something. That even, that there's, you know, one, one of the scariest moments that you can have as an athlete is that when, you know, the, the final cut is there and, like, everybody's made the team and then something happened and the coach said, I've got to make two more cuts. And you know what? It's all those people. It's those people, those two that were so content with making the team that they skipped through practice. You know what? I mean, they were a little problem child. You know, oh, I missed it. I mean, but it's no big deal. No intensity. And they think because they thought that they made it. And then all of a sudden something happens. It's like, well, we, we got to cut two people. Uh, look at your name on the board. And all of a sudden they go away sorrowful. I want you to understand something. There's cutting time that's happening in the church right now. It's, and listen, there's some folks whose name is, is, is going to be written on the board. You didn't make it. You can just turn your uniform in. I, I'm, I'm going to replace that. I'm going to take that what you have and give that to someone else who already has, who already has hunger and thirst after righteousness. I'll give them yours. Listen, I don't want anybody to have mine. I don't want anybody to have yours. I want you to look at this and realize that what God has for you cannot be attained without communion, without fellowship, without friendship, and without agreement. Let's get in line with the Lord this year. Let's get in line with the Lord right now. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you right now for your word and for divine alignment. God, we know that this is not an accident, that you're ministering to us right now, that we are out of step, but that you're bringing us back in step, that all manner of ideas have crept into the church where we are no longer sure about where we stand. Well, God, we bless you now that you've given us a mandate to continue to be countercultural, that we're going to continue to be peculiar people, that we're going to be priests, that, that you call us to be a priestly nation and a nation within a nation. So we bless you right now that, God, this is a year of radical change and that as you're shaking and moving, we pray that, God, that you allowed us to be sturdy enough that in the shaking, we'll still remain. We bless you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I pray that you have an awesome, awesome Thursday evening. Meditate on this word tonight. 
Don't forget to share this with us uh, with somebody that you love. Share this with somebody you don't like. I don't care. It doesn't matter who you share with. Share this with somebody because there's no greater gift than the Word of God. And so I thank you for sharing it. But I also thank you for ministering this to other people. Listen, I'm going to minister it. I'm ministering it right now. But you know what? Your friend's going to need you to minister it with your words. Your family's going to need you to minister it with your own mouth, with your own sentiment, and with your own heart. And so I want you to realize you are a minister. You have a ministry. And when we grab hold of that, we'll stop looking and saying, that pastor, that pastor, that pastor, and here's what they didn't do, and here's what they didn't do. And you'll realize that, God, you placed it in my sphere of influence. It's not what they do. It's what am I going to do. It's not whether they can be trusted. It's whether can I be trusted. I want you to receive that in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have an awesome Thursday night.